is the whispering voice and I hope I find you all well and happy and that you've had a good week and a good weekend um, we're now at the start of a new week in this video I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, some of my family history and some of these stories that my uncle has told me uh, as we've eaten a meal together uh, he likes to um, chat about different things and it's surprising some things he's never told me before some of you may remember in a video I did a long long time ago about where my great great grandmother lived and uh, great great grandfather it's a uh, it was a small cottage with basically two rooms downstairs and two rooms upstairs and uh, they were known then as two up two down and a very small little back backyard and uh, I've actually been to see the cottage where it was now when they they lived in the cottages there was four little cottages but they've since been made into two but the layout and the back is the same the back garden now, if you can call it a back garden, I was amazed how they lived. It's, I measured from the back door. The garden was only four feet long in length. Just unbelievable. Um, and the width, I think, was about 12 foot. Um, in today's standards would be um, well people wouldn't live like that now the cottages today have purchased land at the back of this um, little garden piece and uh, that is their garden but them days it was just that little piece in the in the back um, but he, my grandmother, my uncle, uh, and their parents, and another daughter. There was one, two, three, four, five, five of them, sometimes six, if their uncle came. And they all lived in this two up, two down. And my great great grandfather had to make his living. He worked in the quarry, as I, as you may remember, and he got um, he got hurt. Some stone fell on him, and he was badly well, nearly crushed, but he was badly cut, and so they carried him home and. Uh, that evening the quarry manager came to the house to tell him that he would be deducted half a day's pay and of course you had to pay for doctors them days so they sort of patched him up the best they could and I think within a few weeks even though he wasn't ready go back he went back to work because work was money um, but I think within one or two years he did uh, fall and uh, it killed him but they carried on them days 
because there was no room for sitting about and moping over the death really and that's where my great great uh, grandfather uh, left them and of course my great grandfather then used to go he, I think he worked in the quarry for a bit but when he finished his shift in the quarry he used to go poaching and there was a lot of poaching then and this would have been in the 1920s into the 30s um, because uh, everyone in the area had no money the only people with money would have been the gentry the landowners um, because they were well they owned the land the properties and they would have an income off the land and the rent from the properties so uh, a lot of the men including my great grandfather would go poaching at night for rabbits and they would sell half of what they caught and they would eat the other half because a chicken in them days was a delicacy it was a treat and they could only have it at Christmas um, you could buy meat but of course you needed money and uh, something they didn't have um, but one thing I will say when my great great grandfather was killed in the quarry all the quarrymen I may have told you in a previous video if you remember and if you don't well that's why I'm recapping on it really for people uh, who didn't or weren't listening to me then and all the quarrymen got together and carved a gravestone for him and uh, still there today uh, wonderful talented men they were to think they were just quarrymen um, and of course the quarry manager allowed it because they um, they did it in their own time now after or with the poaching my great grandfather used to make his own nets which a lot of them did in them days and they used to have also an allotment uh, if you don't know what an allotment is it's just a, a piece of land which you could rent to grow your own vegetables and uh, that's what he used to do so they used to get their meat what he caught and uh, the vegetables was grown and they did lots of walking them days as well where I must get it from I think <laughs> but on these walks they knew whatever time of year they were walking they knew what fruit berries plants or any wild edibles what was available and they'd pick them and in a lot of cases they would pickle them or make jam uh, anything like that to preserve it and they're very clever really I think we've lost a lot of that today because we can simply go out and buy food um, but it was a very hard life and my great grandmother also after she'd have to do all the house chores do all the shopping whatever little shopping they got then she'd come back make sure the food was ready for when the men if you like came from work and she would then walk about two miles to a farm and then she would herd all the cattle 
in for milking and she used to do that twice a day once in the morning and again at night and uh, she um, a very strong woman and of course that was a little bit more income and I think the farmer then used to give them some milk a week as well so with everything they all pulled together um, it was a hard life my uncle was saying but it seemed a very happy life nobody wanted anything nobody expected anything what they got they worked for or as far as the poaching concerned is um, they took what they could they'd never steal as in going into people's houses and things like that because poaching is really stealing but it wasn't stealing as we know it today it was um, a case of do or die really they took what they needed to live um, and the landowners I think knew it was going on because they had uh, gamekeepers and if you were caught poaching they, uh, it was um, quite severe punishment but uh, they were very careful I think So it's a very interesting uh, chat I had with him uh, and I actually took him, we went to put flowers on the graves last week because we had such nice weather and uh, we stopped at the little cottage and he said it seemed like yesterday because it hasn't changed that much. The only difference, I think, it's be they've made it, as I said, from four cottages into two larger ones. And also, he said they're painted white now, but they weren't then. They were just stone. Um, and of course, they could play in the streets then, in the road, because the only traffic they had was the horse and carts. I thought I'd uh, just share some of my family history. I know some people asked if I could do any um, uh, talking about my family and all the history of how people lived uh, in this part of Wales anyway. So I hope you found it interesting, but most importantly found it relaxing to listen to um, and thanks again for such kind comments on my videos um, I've noticed on my channel that I've got 5,000 subscribers which is absolutely unbelievable think if there's 5,000 people listening to you it's, uh, <laughs> I know they're not listening all at once probably but um, it can be a daunting thought <laughs> but I'm very grateful for each and every one of you wherever you are and whoever you are um, it's very kind of you to listen to my videos and comment on them and writing to me as well I get um, lots of personal messages and someone did ask me um, in a personal message how many messages I get um, and do I reply to them all <laughs> well I get a lot of messages um, I'll put it this way it takes me about an hour a day go through the messages and reply to them sometimes it takes longer uh, sometimes not as long 
but I never see it as a chore. Uh, I'm so grateful for you listening, um, and not only taking the time to listen, but to actually write to me, and um, you know, I know how much time it takes, and I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. So, the waffling will stop now, and you take care of yourselves, and I'll speak to you soon.